aircraft in our fleet, the Antonov 124, which allows us to carry outsized and heavy cargo. Creating Antonov Airlines, they formed a partnership with the London-based company Airfoil Heavy Lift that handles the booking of orders, scheduling, and flight routing. Okay. Okay, Together, they fill a niche using Antonov's ultra-jumbo jets that no one else can. Their major Western competitors use 747s, but they aren't large enough to handle bulky outsized cargo. Before long, Antonov was transporting everything from power station generators to auto racing crews, cars, gear and all, to points all over the world. Oh, it's pretty well a case of you, you name it, we've carried it. Uh, personally, uh, my favourite is uh, the railway locomotive that we took complete from Canada to Ireland a few years ago. Um, that set a, a world record for the largest commercial payload. It was 109 tonnes. The sort of psychological concept of putting a railway engine in the aeroplane is, is well, mind-blowing. Okay, so, so you're going to talk about, say, 100, 100 to 110 tons and drop half in Chicago and the, the, the other half in Columbia. So you, so you, want, you want to do... Well, this is the operations centre of Airfoil Heavy Lift, and it's where we coordinate the flights uh, that we operate with the Antonov uh, Design Bureau, and that includes the AN-124 and the AN-225 aircraft. Planning is crucial when cargo is oversized and or overweight. Computers help determine how cargo will be loaded, and plotting the route is challenging. Hefty cargo guzzles up a lot of gas, and several refueling stops are usually required. Remarkably, the biggest airplanes in the world don't need the biggest runways in the world. These jets can touch down in limited spaces. The 124 can even land on grass fields, making the aircraft popular in Africa. It airlifts life-saving supplies to countries in need. It once packed 452 Ethiopian refugees into its bulk and flew them to safety. The Mighty 124 also carries the Antonov Design Bureau. Its utility kept the company in business after the Iron Curtain fell. Because we earn money by our Antonov 124 and we support Design Bureau designers in Kyiv to survive in, in difficult time. Their survival turned into a robust business. By the late 90s, the company was receiving requests to carry loads weighing more than 150 tons, the maximum carrying capacity of the Antonov 124. We gained enormous experience in the commercial service and operation of the 124. And we came to the conclusion that there is a range of even bigger cargoes than the 124 can hold. Opportunity was calling for the 225 and its massive capacity. But it was rusting in a nearby field. Company leaders realized it could fill the demand of lifting megaloads. All of this heavy cargo can be easily carried by the Antonov 225 and management of yeah. our company chose to refurbish this aircraft yeah. after years of being grounded. The Antonov Design Bureau decided to return the airliner to the skies. And they set an ambitious goal. The mighty Antonov 225 would make its second debut at the Paris Air Show. But after sitting idle for eight years, the 225 would need extensive restoration before it could fly again. <laughs> Suddenly, it was deja vu all over again, as the original builders, designers, and pilots of this massive craft were called upon to get it ready for its resurrection.
Now we are facing the problem of certifying the aircraft. We plan to certify it for civil purposes, which means we have to replace some military systems with civilian ones for safety reasons. The decade-old jet had to be treated like it was brand new. The 225 had never been certified. It had never been proven safe to fly. Earlier flights, even the one with a Soviet shuttle on its back, were all military test flights. Now, this giant needed even more trials to prove it met international aviation standards before it would receive certification for commercial flight. The main part of the certification was done in 1989, but after the Soviet Union collapsed, the process was stopped. So there are about 8 to 10 flights left to finish certification, and we are going to do those flights and get the certification for this aircraft. The jet needed to be brought up to date as well. Engineers installed modern navigation and telemetry equipment and a new Honeywell communication system. The aircraft flies with a crew of 17 and their cabins received upgrades. New stricter noise regulations had to be met. And believe it or not, this beefy aircraft had to be, well, beefed up. We had to reinforce the primary structure, especially the floor and nose section of the fuselage, so that the aircraft could be able to transport the large and heavy cargoes weighing up to 250 tons. Every one of these improvements would prep this big jet for the long haul. There is special ground maintenance work now in progress before our first flight after its long stay on the ground. The 225 received six new Ukrainian-built engines that together produce over 300,000 pounds of thrust. For maximum lift, the jet must carry 280 tons, or 76,000 gallons of fuel, an amount that would gas up over 6,000 average-sized cars. The 225 needs a lake of fuel. It gobbles it at the staggering rate of 18 tons an hour, and depending on the weight of the load, it has a potential range of over 8,000 miles. That's the distance between New York and Hong Kong. Before any pilot makes this big bird stretch its 290-foot wingspan, he must prepare for some of the idiosyncrasies of flying such a beast. Of course, there are some difficulties, moments a pilot must be prepared for. For example, the big wingspan means there are moments that the aircraft resists acceleration. The wings are so enormous, they effectively must lift themselves first and then the aircraft. Consequently, any change in flight speed can be tricky for the crew. And the high-rise cockpit means the pilot is perched three stories up in the air during landings, which means what he sees isn't necessarily what he gets. There are difficulties with landing big aircraft, like the 124 or Boeing 747. The same thing happens here on the 225. For example, the eyes of the pilot are about 10 meters off the ground when landing so he has to rely on instruments to land instead of what he sees. Maximum takeoff weight for this muscular jet is a staggering 1,280,000 pounds. That's the equivalent weight of eight 737s lifting off. Would a pilot need 